Hello YouTube. Just thought I'd share with you a, a little fort here called Fort Christmas. It's uh, Fort Christmas Historical Park and it's located um, just outside of Orlando off State Road 50 between Orlando and the Kennedy Space Center on State Road 50, SR 50. Um, when you come through Fort Christmas or Christmas, the city Christmas, fort, uh, there's a fort here called Fort Christmas, which is this fort. And it is free, okay? And uh, this fort is actually located on the same road that takes you to the fort as well as the, um, the wetlands that they have out here. So definitely worth a stop if you're passing through. The fort itself has a lot of old buildings from, I think, the 1920s to 1800s, late 1800s or whatever. I don't know, the, the, the cracker houses, which we'll go look at, and the fort. So stay tuned. All right, thought I would show you a nice little view here coming in. This is what it looks like when you're coming through and there's a little lake. You can see a bird there. I think it's an osprey. Is that what those things are called? Those big tall birds in Florida? Is it an osprey or is it an egret? But those birds, they make a whooping sound. They go really loud. But you come through and you can park um, all along here. They have all sorts of parking here. This is, um, I don't know if this is the visitor center. Yeah, the Fort Christmas Historical Park Visitor Center is, is on the... Uh, let me take the camera off here. So. Alright, so I think that's the Visitor Center when you come in. So if you want some information, you can go there. Otherwise, you can come park here. There's a basketball court, so if you want to play basketball. But these are the buildings, and it looks like they're doing maintenance on one, or they just brought it in. But they've been, um, there's a historical society, the Florida, I forget what it's called, but they, they actually uh, collect these old houses before they get demolished to preserve them and show what houses look like in Florida uh, back in the early, I think it's like the late 1890s to the 1920s and 30s. So we'll take a, a quick look around, show you what's available at Fort Christmas, and I hope you enjoy the show. We are approaching a building that represents uh, the Union School from 1906. I'll let it stay here. You can pause this and try to read it if you're interested in more information about it. But this is what the old schoolhouses look like as of uh, 1906. I think we can go in. So we can come in here and have a lesson, okay? Here is... Um, what American schoolhouses look like in Florida at the turn of the century. Have a little auditorium and little seats for the pupils. Little displays. Although some of this I don't think was from the 1906. Ah, little, uh, these are called books. I think they're called horn books. And it's how they taught them like numbers I don't know if they have alphabet on here, but these are horn books. And this is a picture of the schoolhouse actually, I think, being used as a school because it looks like it's full of students. Did you see this, honey? Look, there's um, pictures here of the school actually functioning as a school. It's uh, pretty amazing, actually. Some more pictures here of what it was actually like here with the teachers and the kids and the building itself. I think when they had it, they, I think at one time they had it over there where the uh, basketball court is. But they've also got brochures here that you can take if you want to, you know, get more information. And uh, they even want feedback. This is um, Orange County Parks and Recreation. All of this is free, by the way. Um, you can just bring your family through. Uh, Fort Christmas is located off um, State Road 50 as you're crossing over from um, basically Cape Canaveral um, Kennedy Space Center towards Orlando, from the Space Coast towards Orlando. This is a, a old style uh, student desk, very small, probably for someone in first grade or second grade. Desk opens up. And they have storage there for pencils and paper and other school supplies. I think this was used for an inkwell. So they would put ink there and the kids could write. And of course, 
ancient typewriters. Yeah, these, these, for those of you who are millennials or younger, these used to be the computers. <laughs> Actually, some of this stuff is, is not 1906. Okay, I think, I think a lot of this stuff is probably... Night. Although some of this older stuff, maybe. I don't know if they had typewriters back then. That would require researching. But there's information. I'm thinking this is from the 1920s, 1930s. And, of course, you have this kind here, which I actually remember using similar stuff when I was um, working as a newspaper man. But look at these old ads. $85 for this thing. This is a calculator. <laughs> Did you see this calculator? $85 for that calculator. It's a brand new Victor. Adds, multiplies, divides, and subtracts. Only $85. And then you still got to buy the, um, the paper rolls. So this stuff was very expensive. And of course, typewriters. Those were super expensive back then in the day. It's kind of weird because when you look at this old technology, you look at, you know, um, the quality of the stuff that it puts out. It's nowhere near comparable to what we have nowadays, but these things still last. Um, I think, you know, they not make nice little display pieces like in a museum or it's a private collection or something like that. But functionality-wise, um, our computers and stuff are so much more powerful. And um, it's amazing because it's a lot cheaper, like, you know, this this is a, I guess this is like a manual calculator. It doesn't require electricity. But $85 for that. I think this is some family trees. These are the people that are still here um, or lived in um, Fort Christmas. Fort Christmas is actually a tiny little town, okay? And um, these are the people, the families that have been here. So some of these houses and stuff that we're looking at, were actual homes for these people. And it was very nice that um, their family have um, donated their homes and other stuff to preserve this stuff so that passers-by can get a glimpse of um, what life was like in Florida, at, you know, in the uh, early 1900s, 1910s, 20s, and 30s. We're gonna head through the double doors here. Obviously, this mosquito netting and stuff, this is new. But a little chair, rocking chair to chill in. Let's see if they'll let us in here. Oh, it looks like this back room is locked. It's an actual classroom. They had it open at one time, but it's closed now. I guess maybe they don't want anyone in there playing with it. But you have all the student desks right there. I don't know if you can see it here. All the student desks with their books out, ready to go. And you got the little globe in the back, a map of the United States. The uh, little chalkboard there that the teacher would use, it says 1920s to 1969. That's what school looked like here in America. Um, and of course, the teacher's desk. Wow, this teacher had a typewriter, a little computer on their desk. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, just left the, the school building there with the classroom. And now we are heading over here. And it looks like they have some old style tractors as well as another building we're gonna be checking out here. You can see all these uh, tractors out here. Wow, that guy is hauling. I'm thinking probably from the 1920s and 30s right here. So they actually have this fenced off, so I guess they don't want people crawling around on it. This uh, red one right here is from 1949. It's a Ford 8N tractor. And um, it's a 1949. And this one must be newer. I mean, they've got actual batteries and stuff on it. So this one is 1951. No, the red one here. This Farmall McCormick, McCormick Farmall is a 1951 tractor. This one is a 1930s tractor. Although I'm looking at the tires, the wheels, those are new tires. So this would be like the old tires. You see um, the old tires? They were solid rubber, no air. This is before they had um, uh, inner tubes and stuff with air. So the old tires, now that's a new tire, I think, because I think I see air there. 
But the old tires were all solid rubber like this. I think that's probably solid rubber also. All of the back, I don't know if they had air back then. I don't think they did. Maybe, well, they did it in the 1940s. You can go really old here and have a horse pulling everything. This is uh, the Parton House and Barn from the 1950s. Uh, some of you may want to read, so I'm going to put it here and you can just pause. And read that information. But this would be a 1950s house. And we can come inside and see how people lived back then. You see, they actually had electricity, although I think that lamp was probably newer. I don't know if it's um, era or not. But lots of modern um, conveniences, like um, looks like they had stoves, electric stove, maybe. Yeah, this is, no, actually these were gas, no, yeah, these were gas, I think, maybe electric, this is electric, yeah, because it's got the heating element, the heating coil, so it had an electric stove, with, I think that's some kind of storage on the side, and the oven, huge oven inside, and look at all the controls, isn't that crazy, and a timer. Of course, you got your spice rack. And cabinets for storage. This is the shelving here. And all the items here. Looks like giant asparagus. Let's see what's under here. Oh my goodness. I think that's a meat grinder. You squish the meat in there and squeeze it out or something or I don't know <laughs> maybe maybe one of our viewers knows <laughs> I'm not a very good uh, uh, tour guide here for for historical stuff because I didn't really research any of this we just stopped by here on our trip through Orlando we had uh, some matters to attend to and um, decided to stop by here just to check out the place and um, you know share it with you guys but here's a old ice cooler uh, back then, I don't think they ran off electricity. You had to bring ice. They would put like a block of ice in here. And it would keep everything cool. So this is how they kept things cool. You, you, you got a solid block of ice. And it looks like they have um, it's a generator. It's an electric generator. So this one did run off electricity. Wow, look at that. So this one had, um, was an electric, this one I think really did keep things cool. Might have been an electric um, refrigerator. And of course you have the bathroom here. Which I'm actually surprised, it actually still looks pretty modern. Bathrooms haven't really changed too much from the 50s to now. But you've got a, a washer, I don't know if that's a dryer next to it. You've got a washing machine. And this is how they used to spray for bugs. You actually had those little sprayers. I remember those in Thailand. And you had um, irons. But they had flushing toilets and stuff. That's pretty amazing. And, of course, the bedroom here. I hate to say this, but when I look at a room like this, it's like it reminds me of Grandma's bedroom, you know? <laughs> But this is how it would look, you know. This is how people were back then in the 1950s, 40s, 30s. This house is like 1950s era. So this house is about 70 years, how people lived 70 years ago. And you can see a nice little kitchen. A lot of the layout, if you look at it, is actually pretty uh, standard, even for modern houses. And of course, all the antiques, various antiques on display here. Unfortunately, they have it closed off, so you're not to cross it. You don't want people touching. But you've got, um, I, don't, I don't think that's a fan or something, a big round thing. I'm not sure. I don't see any blades on it. But I do see uh, sewing machines and a lot of irons and a toaster. And it looks like a cash register back there. And they had a vacuum. Interestingly, the, the light switch on this house is really low. It's like waist tight. And of course, you got your little chair. 
This is a modern home with a nice new HD TV and a portable little radio. You know, I think back then people, before TV was popular, and you know, when TV was new, they didn't really have too many shows. I think they would run them only certain hours each day or every, not even every day, maybe every day, maybe every other, I don't know, I'd have to look at the records. But um, radio though would always be on at a certain time and families would gather uh, sitting in the living room listening to the radio. I remember, I guess like the president would have his fire ch side chats and stuff like that and people would tune in and listen to find out what's going on with the uh, country. Oh, a little trivia question for those of you who are on the younger side. Do you know what this is and how you work it? I've been seeing um, some videos on Facebook, and I'm going to give you a little education, okay? For those of you who are young and don't know, this is called a telephone. <laughs> and in the old days, you picked up the headset, see, the headset or handset, and it pushes down these things when it's off, but when, when you lift it up, and this is plugged, there's a, a, a wire that goes into the wall, and it makes that tone, mm, that tells you the phone is working. So you pick it up, and the side with the, um, this side is for the ear, the side with the mouthpiece right here has the cable coming out of it. So you hold that up to your head, and you talk on it. But you can't just talk, it doesn't work automatically. So here's the proper steps for working a telephone, for those of you who do not know or have a clue on how to use a rotary phone. That's what, this is called a rotary phone. You pick up the phone first, you bring it up to your ear and you listen. You should hear it go eh. Then you dial the number and the numbers are the same. They kept the same format. So you have the area code, like for this area, oh, come on phone, it's out of focus here. It's three, two, one, that's the area code. Then the phone number, we're just gonna make up a number. Four, six, seven, and then the, the fourth set of numbers, nine, one, four, zero. By the way, don't dial that. I don't know whose number that is. I just made it up. So then you, you listen in the headset again, and it should start to ring. And then when it rings, someone will pick it up, and that's how you work the phone. Then when you finish making the call, you simply hang up. That's why they call it hang up. You literally hang up the phone again. So when you dial, this is called a rotary and it works by, you pick the number and you go that way. Okay? And if you mess up, you have to hang up the phone and start all over again. But that's how you work these old style phones. And that was your lesson for today. But this is a nice little living room with, a, um, uh, this is a very well-to-do house. They've got a a uh, piano here and it looks like a heater so a stove for heating and stuff for staying warm and of course you got the nice patio here with the porch what a cool house